Welcome to the Reference Assembly with Mutation Survey Software Webinar. My name is Fook Nguyen, and I am a biologist at Soft Genetics and a presenter for this webinar. To start off, we will go over the functionality of the Project Reviewer, which is a tool used to view overlapping applicants. Not only does it offer an overlaying contact view, it also generates a consensus sequence from the applicants. The tool can be used to view multiple replicate samples in one window. The project reviewer displays the electrophorograms, mutation table, and base differences for each sample. In addition, it has a useful grouping tool to group samples according to specific characters or sample ID. All navigational techniques are the same as in the main analysis window and discussed in the introductory webinar. And finally, we will discuss the method to save and print from the project reviewer. The project reviewer assembles overlapping applicants according to context. In this view, you can see the entire project aligned to specific context or have an overall picture of the entire project. It can be easily selected from the display tab on the main menu. This option can only be selected after the analysis has been completed. The main window of the project reviewer has four different panes. The left pane is a sample pane which contain all the sample files that were added similar to the browser pane in the main analysis window. However, the sample pane does not contain contact information. The base pane shows overlapping amplicons according to context. The hyphen marks represent the basis that matches the reference and the color-coded bases indicate different variations. The color legend is located at the bottom of the base pane. In addition, the base pane also displays the reference sequence and the consensus sequence including the cDNA number. The trace pane shows the electrophorograms of the sample traces. We will discuss how to adjust the pane to display different electrophorograms later on. The mutation table resembles the mutation table in the main analysis window as they display similar information. You can also click on the mutation and the project reviewer will take you to the sample that contained the mutation, the mutation in the base pane, and the location in the electrophorogram since the whole reviewer is linked. You may also edit your mutation in this table as we will discuss later. For further detailed information on how to edit mutations, please refer to the reviewing and editing data webinar. Just like the main analysis window, the navigation for each pane uses the same zooming and scrolling method as discussed in the introductory webinar. Another similarity to the main analysis window is that the display for each pane can be chosen by you. First, there is the unlink button. This button controls whether the entire viewer is linked. For example, if it is clicked off, you can zoom into the electrophorogram without affecting the view of the base pane. The pane display buttons control which pane are displayed and which are removed from the project reviewer. You can also choose which specific contact to observe or choose the all option to view all contact at one time. By choosing to display all, the project reviewer will overlay all sample into a single view relative to the GenBank file. I will now go into more details about some of the panes in the project reviewer. This is a zoom in view of the base pane. As you can see, the consensus sequence is displayed on the top and the only base text that is displayed are the variants found in the individual sample at that location. The variant is color coded and recorded as an R in the consensus sequence which is the IUPAC symbol for an AG variation. As we zoom in a bit further, the legend at the bottom of the base pane suggests that the variant is a heterozygous variation. Moving on to the electrophorogram pane, with the icon shown here, you can select to show sample traces, show mutation traces, or show both. In the first example, only the show sample trace is selected. As you can see here, Four sample traits are displayed at once. The variation is highlighted to show the position of the variant. The second example only shows the mutation electrophorogram for each sample trace. Again, four electrophorogram are shown at once. The variation is indicated with a peak at the position of the detected variant. The default display is to show both the sample trace along with its respective mutation electrophorogram. Besides from the similarity, and navigation of the mutation table 
in both the project reviewer and the main analysis window, the table also contains links to NCBI DBSNP database. In this diagram, the purple background represents a reported variation. If it is a reported DBSNP, you can right click on the mutation and a link to NCBI DBSNP database is shown at the bottom and will open up the web page for the specific SNP if clicked. However, if you add a custom DBSNP tag to a variant, as we will discuss next, the link to NCBI will not be active unless you manually input the identifier and the link. As mentioned before, you can add tags to novel variants in the mutation table in the project viewer as well as the main analysis mutation table. For more information about custom variant tags, please refer to the custom report webinar. You can right click the variant and select edit in the mutation table and this will bring up a dialog box with a tag drop down menu at the bottom. You can choose specific tag for the variant. If you choose to add a dbSNP tag to a variant, you must also input a link to the dbSNP database and identifier for the link to work. Along with the tag, you can go to the settings and choose the color coding for each tag. This is a very useful way to keep track of all tag variants and allow for easy identification. In addition, you can also add comments to each variant if needed. The project reviewer has a very useful grouping tool to group samples by either specific characters or from text file. This grouping tool is great for viewing replicate samples for different patients or viewing overlapping applicants. We will first discuss the grouping by specific characters. In the dialog box, I told the software to group my samples by looking at characters 6 to 13. As you can see here, my samples are now grouped into three specific patient ID number at characters 6 to 13. The other method to group is by using the from file option and then click load sample ID. Here you can either choose to manually type in identifier to group the samples by or import a text file that already contains the sample ID. When using the importing option, you can specify more than the allotted 10 sample ID in the dialog box. Here, the grouping of the samples are the same as the previous diagram because the same sample ID was specified. In this window, the samples are grouped by patient ID. The base pane shows overlapping applicants for a single patient. By using the grouping tool, we can identify discrepancy for a single patient between overlapping applicants. The variant shown here is only in two of the sample file. Looking at the electropherograms for the same position, we see again that only two electropherograms have the variant. There seems to be a spacing issue in these two traces, while the rest of the overlapping traces does not contain the same variant. From this thought, this mutation is probably not real, and the software also recognizes this and automatically deletes it as commented in the mutation table. Within the same patient, an example of a higher confidence mutation is shown here. In this window, the majority of the overlapping applicants shows the same variant. If we look at the electropherograms, we can see that a variant appears at the same position in all four traces. Since this variation appears in the majority of the overlapping applicants, we can estimate with high confidence that this is probably a real mutation. With this in mind, the project reviewer is a very useful tool for data analysis and observing the project as a whole while keeping the entire project organized with the grouping tool. Before printing the variations, you must scale each pane to your specifications. Once you are done, hit the Save button in the toolbar. A dialog box will appear. You can save the image as a JPEG or high resolution bitmap. After saving, simply open the save image and print it directly. To summarize the webinar, the project reviewer is a useful tool for overlaying applicants into a single view or by separate context if they are aligned to the same reference. Viewing and grouping replicate samples, viewing multiple electropherograms, and tagging novel variants. Any edits to the mutations in the project reviewer will be carried over into the main analysis window. If you want, you can also save and print images straight from the project reviewer. This is a unique and alternative tool to the main analysis GAD window, as it offers a global view of the entire project with overlapping applicants. This concludes the reference assembly 
with Mutation Survey webinar. If you would like more information or want to try a 30-day free trial, please visit www.softgenetics.com or send an email to info at softgenetics.com. You may also request for online training if you are interested in learning more about the software and its capabilities. Thank you for joining me in this webinar.